and and some of the stuff he told like were were stories of a different time and a different place and and i mean we talk about he changed it and what um it's a time of transformation and we've seen it you've been in locker rooms for 50 years um and you're still in the locker room of junior you know guys who go have gone on to play in the nhl guys who have gone on to win stanley cups Mm -hmm. and you see these locker rooms and things like that over the last 50 years how much change has happened in that time it's it's amazing very very little it's really i I think what what you know whether you're playing uh junior a junior b or old timers it's that camaraderie in the dressing room is what when you ask people what do they miss after they quit playing the game yep 99 out of 100 people will say it's the guys it's the it's the locker room that the fun you have ripping on each other yeah goofing around so that never changes i, I remember playing in in the rotten arena at, at 15 years old and it's the same banter back and forth now justin schultz played for the west Coast warriors and sure. of course he's won two stanley cups yeah with pittsburgh yeah. right we had him at rlp with a couple of other players that train there in the summer you go in the dressing room and listen to these guys it's the same thing it's the same joking back and forth. It's the same ripping. Like it, that's what I think about it. It's just a square 30 by 30 room that hasn't changed. I mean, obviously at NHL levels, now they have couches and big screen TVs and, <laughs> sure. you know, massage tables and stuff like that. But your average arena is the exact same thing it was when we were kids playing, when did, I was a kid playing. Did you ever see, um, you know, you talk about how they're, they're, they're ripping on each other. Mm. And we live in this culture now where um, there's a, and, and part of the, the the change that's happening is we're noticing that there's, I don't even know if you'd call it a hypersensitivity, but the, the sensitivity has changed. And the word bully is being, um, I think the word bully has evolved since I was a kid, certainly. Mm-hmm. Um, did you ever see any of that or the hazing or some of these things that you hear about um, in locker rooms? And has that has that changed at all? Or when they're ripping on each other, is it just competitive to try and get each other to, have you seen that part of the game evolve? Has it Has it refined itself? You know, you hear, you hear it about, especially back in the day, you heard about hazings and stuff. And a lot of, you you know, you maybe didn't believe them. They seem pretty outlandish. Nobody ever shaved your eyebrow? No, no. (laughs) Luckily, I never, I never had anything like that. I mean, we had, you know, we had guys goofing around in the dressing room, but it wasn't targeted to one person, Uh, you know what I mean? Or one group, whether they're rookies or not. Obviously today, like the hazing is just almost the words taken out of the hockey language. Like with, with um, the Kelowna Chiefs, we have a great time in September. We take the guys down to Gyro Beach. There's competitions where they're playing football. They're going for swims, but it's all good, clean stuff. Nobody gets hurt. Nobody gets offended. Right. And, it, and it's all team bonding. So yeah. for an hour, you're playing volleyball. For an hour, you're playing basketball. Like I say, you know, the lake's getting a little cold and maybe the end of September and the guys are going out and doing laps around a buoy or whatever, but <laughs> it's all good fun. Nobody's targeted. There's no such thing as, you know, as the rookies and the veterans. Yeah. It's just a team. And that's what it's about is pulling the team together and team bonding. The hazing thank god is out of the game because man oh man some of the stories i heard like if those are true wow Uh, i was the same way when i was a rugby player um i would hear about and and and, i mean i was a rugby player in canada which i think is different than being a rugby player in europe i I, we our team went on tour in europe Mm -hmm. um and that was uh that was a crazy crazy experience and 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 the players over there boy oh boy um you know you you could hear some of the stories that you hear about um, you could see that being true with some of the teams that we played over right. there. Um, but I never experienced it, but I did hear the stories and that was always the thing too. I, I, you know, you'd hear these stories about, uh, things like that and our, um, the way that our society is kind of evolving and moving. And, 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 um, I love hearing that the conduct of a player and, and the respect and all that stuff was there back then. And it still is now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the kids nowadays, I mean, they're young men. You know, they're they're pr- smart. They're professional kids. If if they go offside in a in a locker room or on a, on a bus trip to you sure. know Kootenays, they could lose their spot on the team. Like that's one thing I really admire about my coach Ken Law and our owner um, Jason Tanzam. Like, there's no room for that kind of stuff, right? And there's no warnings, any of that. It's like if you do it, you're gone. They'll trade you to Chase or Princeton or something. <laughs> Rutland, because of the Okanagan and Kelowna, is a is a really destination place to play for Very these much kids so, now. Yeah. So if there's a chance of them losing their spot for doing something idiotic right. and outdated, nobody's going to do it. You know, yeah. and like I say, it's all about the team, building the team, not tearing down a guy because he's a rookie or a couple of guys because they're rookies. Like, like I think the worst thing our team does is the rookies have to unload the bus. 
when yep. we get to a team and then they yep. pack the bus. That's their they job. Pay their du- they're paying Absolutely. their dues. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, the veterans are sitting in the in the back seats in the comf- comfy. The rookies are more up close, you know, up, up front. So there's I mean, a little bit of that stuff, but that's just seniority. Yeah. Right. A 20 yes. year old deserves the best seat over a 16 year old. Right. A 20 year old deserves not to have to unload the bus when a, when a 17 year old comes on board. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think that is anything hazing. It's just know your role, your seniority, basically. Yeah. You're, you're, you're teaching them responsibility as they come up and, uh, and, and, and toughening them up. And, and I mean, even that nowadays, it's like, we're, you know, we're trying to build character and um, where I see, you know, if to, to use a, a hockey term where the puck is going. Um, I think that many times the magnifying glass gets put on organizations that are doing really, really good things so they can root out things like those stories that we've heard of. And it seems like your organization is very, very much like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, what about, what about um, when it comes to women, how women are treated? Like I think about back in the day when I was in my rugby um, locker room and, and the idea of locker room talk. And I mean, you hear, I mean um, you know, you've heard Donald Trump stuff that he's said in the past and he's like, Oh, it's just locker room talk. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of made it this, um, this, he's put the cultural focal point on this one, um, phrase. Um, have you noticed, have you noticed that the language changing towards things like that respect towards women, um, over the years? Um, I know back when I was playing the the conversation in the room, I would not m- want my mom walking in on. Yeah, I feel the same without way. Without a doubt. I'm right? the exact same way. Without yes. a doubt. That's, that's uh, true. Honestly, the, the guys nowadays, it's really toned down from what I see. Now, you got to understand, I'm, I'm not in there nearly as much as the players no. day to day. But, but what I do see is definitely a lot more respect. They're, they're not ripping on a guy because he's shorter. You know what I mean? There's, mm-hmm. there's so many things that have, it's just genuinely good fun. Nobody's getting hurt. Yeah. What happens when the coaches and marketing guy are out of the room? Who knows? Right. Right. And, and once again, you can go into a, a, a you know, a 50 and over dressing room right now. And my mom would still be embarrassed to be in that room. Like, you know what I mean? But Absolutely. It, it, it's just, it's that sanctity. That men behaving that badly room, sort right? of. A, it is. <laughs> but, but is it behaving badly or are we just letting off steam is that how we Blowing talk off steam. And, yeah. yeah like what I, i'm not I, there's no way i would talk in public the way i did in a dressing room on a friday night game after i got lit up with 15 goals like sure. you, you know like you got lit like, up with 15 goals. it's it's the sanctity of the dressing room like you know you've got the wife and kids and your and your normal life and all of a sudden you, you get into that dressing room and you're 19 again you could be 49 mm-hmm. but that's the mentality you're back with the guys and having a good time and i and i personally i don't think there's anything wrong with that no, you know, you don't take that behavior out into the public. Obviously, the language, you know, the slurs, anything like that. Keep, so keep it in the dress. Time room. and place for, for for that kind yeah. of stuff. Just, and I don't. I hope it never goes away. It's just boy. I mean, the term boys being boys. There's a term for it for a reason because yeah. it happens. Right? And I and I think that that's part of what um, the culture is is, is battling. I, I I think that there are some times where our culture will label something as to- toxic masculinity. When is it really toxic masculinity, mm-hmm. or is it what? we genetically just kind of do, you know, you talk about like us ripping on each other. That's, that's, that's what guys do. Best friends do that with each other all the time. Totally. It's, it's, yeah. it's that kind of a thing. I always equate it to the, the girls having a party when they're sitting around drinking wine. That's their yeah. dressing room. That's their talk that they probably don't want their husbands to hear. They probably don't want their kids <laughs> to hear. And what, and there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Right. And as I say, it's, it's just the, the female dressing room. And, 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 you know, I've been around hockey and sports long enough where there are women's hockey dressing rooms. You know, you mm-hmm. go in there to get, get stuff done and, you know, some of it's a little offside too, but once again, the sanctity of the dressing room, right? who's it, who's it hurting? Right. Um, do you see the NHL or do you see, um, do you see mixed gender ever becoming part of, because I mean, I look at all the, the, the women's teams that are like women's hockey is exploding compared to when I was a kid, mm-hmm. when you were a kid. Um, do you see that being something that, um, do you see it growing? Do you see that becoming a um, part of the landscape a little bit more? I definitely would love to see women's sports, um, you know, more primetime TSN sports as that yeah. kind of thing. Sports net. It's, it's hard, to, you know, men are just physically bigger, stronger, faster. They're always probably going to be, you know, there's, yeah. there's some behemoth women out there. Serena Williams. Yeah. One oh. of my all time faves. Yeah. I look at her and I think, good Lord, like, mm-hmm. you know, she could take a round out of me easy enough. <laughs> um, but you know, as far as team sports, I, I mean, I'd love to see the pay structure different. Yeah. You know, I, I've always felt bad for women that are playing hockey, like the Olympic team. Yes. When they leave, they go to their full-time job, whether they're a teacher or whatever, where the males are, if they're on the Olympic team, 
they're probably getting ten million dollars a year. Sure, they're easily right. Absolutely. So I don't think that's fair. I'd love to see the, the female structure, pay structure, come up and let let it be their full time job if I, they're that good. I bring it up because you're a goalie, and um, there was a gal who played Menorial. There, there you go. She played uh, French Canadian, yep. which which is awesome because I mean goalies. I, I how 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 many French Canadian goalies who are at the top of the echelon, the entire top of the game, Martin Brodeur yeah. has that heritage, Patrick, Patrick Waugh, Waugh yeah. you know, can, um, and, and I, I just think about that and, and she actually made it and played an NHL game. Yeah. And, uh, I, I wonder if this next generation that's coming up, if that would happen more often, if, if the, somebody was just the creme de la creme, uh, where, where their, their game was just so high level that they would make it up there and, 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 you know, it truly would become, um, you know, a, a mixed gender league. I don't know if that would happen. Or I, I haven't seen it happen in basketball. I haven't seen it happen in baseball. In hockey, it has happened. But how long ago? A long time ago. 20 plus gotta years. Got to be 20 years. Right? Yeah. She I was, think uh, the thing is, Mike, like you're you're right. The women's game, the women position of goal or, or forward or defense has evolved. But so is the men. Mm. The days of Gump Worsley and Ken Dryden and these guys, though, that Minorioma could is better than them. Sure. Right? Sure. Yeah, she, absolutely. she probably could play better than them. Right? So the men's game has improved so much. Like I remember a couple of years ago, I was at um, the West Kelowna rink and uh, Devin Dubnik was out there and Devin's yep. six, five, six, six. It blew me away watching a practice. It had Justin Schultz, Tyler Myers, a couple other uh, WHL guys. Yeah. They were literally in the slot 15, 20 feet out taking slap shots at him and watching his reaction. Like, I don't even know if they scored on the guy. And that as a goalie, I stood right behind the net up on a different layer and watched it. And I thought, how the hell are you stopping slap shots from NHL caliber players? Yes. 15 to 20 feet away. That blew me away. And I mean, of course, now it's a different, they're down on their knees, they're covering, they're yeah. big, right? Yeah. So yeah, goal is very, very huge, much so now. Right? They're, um, were, you, were you one of the only goalies that was as big as you were back in the day? Well, that's the whole reason. I, I, anybody who knows me knows I'm a diehard Boston Bruin fan and sure. I do not like Montreal Canadiens. <laughs> Ken Dryden yeah. was my idol. Because Ken Dryden was 6'6", I'm 6'6". You know, so back when I played, yeah, you're right. The goalies were still the Jim Rutherford, Gump Worsley type sure. guys that were five, eight, five, nine. Yeah. I'm like, what's that big freak doing in net? <laughs> so Ken Dryden was my guy because that legitimized my position that there is a tall guy in the NHL. Who's got not only game, but is at the top of the oh top God, of the game. Seven Stanley Cups and took one three and took off two years to become a lawyer. Wow. And comes back and won another three or four. Like it's an amazing story. Amazing story. Um any of those cups against the Bruins? Of course not. <laughs> Probably all of them. <laughs> um, I, I just uh, I'm fascinated watching um, watching these things evolve. And, and I'm, I'm really fascinated uh, with the idea that, yes, while things are evolving and time seems to time seem to be changing so much. And uh, um, and there's a lot of this. Um, there's a lot of negativity, a lot of naysayers and things like that out there. I love the the, the, the fresh perspective of you coming in and saying, yeah, but you know what? Um, sports has always built character for a lot of, if not the majority mm -hmm. of, of, uh, of young men who go into it. And, and I do, I do believe like, um, you know, I was told, Hey, go play this sport. It'll keep you out of trouble. Absolutely. I can remember people saying that. Yeah. And, and it, it is the truth. Yeah. Absolutely. It's the truth in so many ways. And it builds your character. It builds your person. Like I know, you know, I was, I was six, six hundred and forty pounds. So, I mean, I got ripped constantly about being skinny. But you, uh, but being in that room, you you learn to defend yourself instead right. of taking it and crying. You, you shot back, yeah. And that's that whole camaraderie of playing, you know, playing with your guys and becoming friends is the back and forth you had with them. Yes, you know, and it was all good hearted ribbing, but nonetheless, you didn't sit there and take it, right? Or you would start crying. Yeah. So you did have to learn to verbally defend yourself. Yes. And I mean, and that those skills are with me today. You know, like I can yeah. sit and talk and if a guy says something, I could give it right back or you don't get offended because someone said something to you, you, just, you know, give it right back to them. No, absolutely. Um, that's that's my life. You just described right there right. constantly, right. you know, trying to give it back yeah. as, uh, as it's given to me. And and that's the uh, um, I think that that I don't know if that's a, a gender specific thing or if that's just um, something that's evolving and, and is being looked at. Um, it's being looked at more seriously. I, I read an article somewhere where it talked about um, young, young, young boys. Like we're talking, you know, before five years old kind of a thing and how um, they just naturally pick up sticks and start fighting with each other. They mm -hmm. just naturally start doing it when they're, when they're, when they're kids. And I just wonder how much of um, genetic programming that we have as, as men and is society trying to get us sometimes to, to, to go against, what genetics say 
And I think that that's one of the one of the big questions that's out there today for um, for men. And that's what he changed it is all about. We're trying to um, we're trying to get all of these different issues that are out there plaguing society or or, or, um, that society's focused on and getting them out to the forefront. And I think that um, the evolution and the analyzation of our behavior as men is key. And I think sports is always going to be a big part of that because a lot of boys like they like to pick up six. They like to evolve right into sports. A lot of them just do that. And it's funny. You can see at such a young age, the gifted players compared to the more rugged players where, you know what I mean? You can tell yeah. that at a young age that that guy's going to be a hard hitting, solid bump and grind kind of guy where that kid over there, he's going to, he's going to avoid that, but he's going to get you 50 goals. Sure. And once again, that starts at a really young age, you know, 10, eight to 10 years old. You look at these reps. That's teams. identified that early. Oh my God, the rep teams. Well, you look at you look at the WHL draft program. What did they draft? Fourteen year olds. Wow. Like a bantam draft. When you know when I played it at that age, you didn't get looked at to your 17, 16, wow. 17. But now they're drafting fourteen year olds because you can see whatever particular talent you need or whatever niche you need for your team. You can see that at fourteen years old. Okay, is that guy going to be a grinder or is he going to be a sniper? Rarely do you change. Rarely does a sniper become a grinder, and right. vice versa. You're, right. Once you're in that niche, that's kind of where you're following that path you're going to follow, right? It's happening earlier and earlier. That's, that's, that's fascinating. Well, um, I mean, go to Rutland arena right now, go to West Kelowna. There's kids eight and camps 10 years are on old. right now. They're yeah. Right Even now. during COVID, we've got these camps. Absolutely. Happening. Yeah. Has COVID affected uh, your season? You guys have a season that would normally begin in October. Is it still going to begin in October? And uh, are we allowed to go watch it? Well, we're going full steam ahead. Like yep. it's a normal year. We're going to just like a normal off season. They've recruited. We just had a camp last weekend. We've got more coming up. Um, the only thing different that we, we know for sure is it's not going to start in September, Okay. which is a marketing guy's fantastic. I think I've told you this before Yeah. in September in Kelowna, you're still 30 degrees outside and nobody wants to sit oh, that's in right. You guys start arena. a month earlier than yeah. the pro leagues. That's right. Yeah, we're like September. September 9th. I think we started last year. Yep. So the October 2nd apparently is when we're going to kick off the schedule, which is fantastic to me because yep. that hockey is October, not September when it's 30 degrees outside. Yeah. I, it doesn't matter pre COVID. I fought this with the Warriors. I fought it with the Chiefs. Like, why are we starting so early? Just, just at a marketing standpoint, yep. it drives you nuts because it's not hockey season in people's minds in September. Yeah, right? no, I I, I totally little, see that. I think a little chill in the air. Well, it's always like, yeah, oh, they start early. Like, and yeah. now you're just online or in line with um with what the pros are doing. Yeah. Um, are you gonna need anybody to sing the national anthem this year? Do you think still? You no, know you'll be getting the call, buddy, without All right, a doubt. Man, I'll take it. Without I'll take it. I'll be uh I'll be the second or third stringer. And if, uh, you know, the first two, three, four people bow uh, out, I'll be your guy. I think It'll you're getting fine. up to second string. Oh, there, come on. Come little, on. Little Scotty. Scotty's yeah, going to take over. You got like a 12 year old or 11 year old. That's just absolutely fantastic. Scotty and Berg. Yeah. Scotty Berg. Yeah. Um, I just want to say thank you for, 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 for being here and have this little conversation. Um, you know, the world of sports and masculinity and, and, and some of these things, um, the headlines are, are, are there. And I think that as this stuff happens, I think we're going to have you back and we'll talk about this stuff because you're a diehard sports guy love outside. You, 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 you work it, you live it, you love it. And uh, I'd love to have you back talking to us again. Anytime for you, Mike and Candace. Alex Draper, you are one of my favorite humans. Alexander George Draper, Alexander George. one of my favorite humans yeah. on the planet. Uh, thank you very much for taking some time out of here, uh, out of your day to be part of HeCast. Uh, for HeCast, the official podcast of He Changed It, I am Mike Chisholm. Thanks very much. Peace.